Hi, my name is Marcus, I'm here on behalf of Fracture Sounds, and this is Trails, their brand new sample library made in collaboration with composer and violinist Alexander Parsons. There are five instruments in this library, the solo violin and cello you are hearing now, an incredibly rare Faulkner dulcimer chord, a synth blend patch, and a newly designed granular synthesis engine, which we'll get to in a little bit. All of these make up some of Parsons' favorite sounds, so let's dive in and have a closer look, starting with the combined strings textures. If you watched Fracture Sounds' walkthrough for their last signature library, Petrichor, you'll be familiar with this interface. There are four controls. The first is dynamics, which can be controlled by the mod wheel to add expression to the performance, whilst lo-fi adds additional effects and noise layers. Let me just bring some in on the default articulation called Emergence. This represents a key aspect of Parsons' sound, which is blending string samples with modular effects and pedals to create these evocative soundscapes. The next articulation, Flickers, is an example of where each sample has been played in quite a different way to introduce a lot of motion into the texture, which is quite good for scoring to picture. And if you want to introduce even more texture, now is a good time to bring in the delay control, which is synced to the tempo of my DAW. Uh, so if I click here for further settings, uh, I can turn on this new ping pong delay feature, which bounces the signal around the stereo spectrum, which sounds pretty interesting. I'll put this on a one eighth dot as well. And so that you can hear what it sounds like dry, I'm gonna turn the reverb and the atmosphere down, first of all. This is how dry these strings sound. And with the delay. Divergence is a slightly more eerie take on the emergence patch with variations in pitch introduced. And in the background you may have noticed Fracture Sounds' staple atmosphere layers, which are created from the original samples and synths, run through a whole bunch of outboard gear. Uh, there are 16 options in this library, but for now let's just hear the three that are on the solo string textures, starting with Vortex. Next is Ethos. And finally, Verdant. And all three of them together sound like this. You can of course mute or solo all of these individually as well as the raw samples and or turn the atmosphere intensity down. But for this next patch, I'm gonna solo the raw sample just so we're not hearing any atmosphere whatsoever. And you'll see why now. This one is called Ricochets, which is pretty self-explanatory. And moving down, we have the next articulation, which is called Short Swells. I'll bring the atmosphere back in for this one. This also probably sounds quite good with a bit of delay on it. Let's hear that too. Yeah. 
Next up we have stutters, which is a repeating and randomised version of ricochets. And say I want to turn up the attack time of this texture, Fracture Sounds have introduced a new articulations feature which is inside each box for each patch. So if I click on the cog here, you can see I can change these parameters. So if I turn up the attack, this is what that sounds like. And the release. Our next articulation is called Reflections, which introduces some beautiful folk-inspired turns on the long notes that we've heard so far. This sounds really good with a bit of delay. And our final articulation is called Deviations, which is where the strings have been brushed flautando style, but with the introduction of more harmonics and overtones. And a great feature about this library, which has been carried over from Petrichor, is the ability to shift click and select multiple articulations at the same time. In fact, I could click and select all the articulations at the same time, but I'm going to start with just deviations and emergence. So we have the long notes of the standard default patch, but with the overtones of the harmonics in deviations. Here's what that sounds like. Well, how about ricochets and reflections? Maybe this makes like a nice attack sound. And in this instance, for example, I might want to turn down the volume of ricochets so we hear just a little bit of it. And of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention that Fracture Sounds have sampled both the violin and the cello separately in their own individual instruments, but as they share the same articulations and features as the combined patch, I'm going to move on now to the dulcer chord. This is the Faulkner Dulcer Chord, a small tabletop piano instrument that is incredibly rare. Alexander only knows of one other in existence, so we're pretty lucky to have this be part of the package. Uh, if you're familiar with Fracture Sounds' other piano libraries, you'll recognise some of these controls available here, starting with colour. Uh, this can make the sound brighter or darker. Next we have Stereo Width, which takes us all the way down from a mono signal to right inside the instrument. Timbre shift, although it sounds like it might be similar to colour, actually shifts the samples so that if I move it down, I'm actually accessing samples that are higher up original recording wise, but have been pitch shifted down to create a smoother and darker sound. And similarly, if I shift this up, we're now accessing lower samples that have been pitch shifted up to the correct pitch. And if you want it to sound like the dulcer chord's been stored in the back of an attic for half a century, we have this new control called Broken Tuning, which shifts individual samples around to create a feeling of detunedness. Gorgeous. We have the option to control the key noise, which is fairly self-explanatory.
And then we have the lo-fi delay and reverb controls found in the string patches. Uh, let's just hear what lo-fi sounds like, but maybe let's choose a different speaker. Perhaps boombox. And moving over to the right, naturally we've had atmosphere layers playing in the background this whole time. Here's what they sound like on their own. We've heard ethos already and we've heard verdant, so let's just have a quick listen to umbra. Now is also quite a good time to go to the settings page where you see we've got options to control the sample start, velocity response. We also have this noise mode here, which is great for if you've got the lo-fi turned on, it just turns off the hiss so that it's not just constantly playing. And especially important for the dulcimer chord, we have this extended range button where we can pitch shift samples to get a fuller range of the keyboard. It doesn't sound quite as realistic at the very high and low extremes, but it does mean that if you needed to play a couple of extra chords that you don't have access to originally, it's quite useful for that. You can hear Fracture Sounds weren't willing to go any further than this C. Which, yeah, <laughs> you hear it on its own, you can kind of tell why, but when you're playing it with something else in the correct range of the instrument, it, it sounds fine to me, honestly. And let me just demonstrate quickly what that lo-fi control does. So let's just say that I have the original control turned up really high, so we have this hiss. If I change this setting in the settings tab, it means that it will only play the hiss when the DAW is playing as well. So if I click host transport, then hit play in logic, and pause. Let's move on now to the synths blend engine. Like the layer blends in Zen Meditations, we have the ability to blend up to three synth layers that are curated by Parsons and the Fracture Sounds team. If you're the type of person that likes to just rapid fire through sounds and find some inspiration quickly, the shuffle button in the middle is probably the best place to start. And as you can see, it just randomly selects three completely new sounds and shifts them to random octaves as well. So here's what this new one sounds like. And you can see, of course, as I move the mod wheel, I am controlling how many of the layers we are using. I can solo layers individually. And say that I'm really happy with the sound of one of the layers, but I'd still like to try something new with the others. I can lock this individual layer, and then when I hit shuffle now, that one will remain fixed. And finally, we can shift the octave of each individual synth up and down. Let me just solo this one again quickly for you. If we look along the bottom of the interface, we have similar controls to what we've seen already, including the ADSR controls here on the left, lo-fi, delay and reverb on the right. But we also have this low pass and high pass filter, which also sculpts the sound a bit more. You know what, let me just shuffle. And the controls at the bottom stay constant no matter what layers you're working with, so I can hit shuffle as much as I'd like. Uh, let me maybe introduce some lo-fi control and hit shuffle a few times, and let's see what this sounds like. The final part of this library brings together all the elements we've heard so far from the strings and synths into a granular synthesizer. For those who may not know, granular synthesis is the process of taking an audio sample and chopping it up into tiny fragments or grains, which can then be processed and retuned across the entire range of the keyboard to create new and interesting textures. So the default patch is uh, based on a string sample that you'll have actually heard earlier on when we were demoing the strings, and that's what this sounds like. But inside the granular synthesis engine, it sounds like this.
The instrument's intensity is controlled by CC1 or your mod wheel, which controls the filter cutoff of the grains. However, we've got a whole bunch of controls here to work with if you want to sculpt the sound more. And if you're the kind of composer that prefers to just get a sound and start playing with it, we can hit the shuffle button, which randomizes all these controls as well. So if we want to move on from the original string sample, we can do this by clicking the drop down here and going through to find one we like, or you can also randomize this by hitting the shuffle button here, which brings up something completely new. And then of course we can shuffle the controls as well to get different sounds for this sample. And if you want to keep any elements of the current sound set, you can hit these padlock buttons which will keep them locked in place even when shuffling other elements of the controls. So diving into the controls more specifically now, our next one is called Mutate, which introduces some randomization to the pitch, pan and saturation of the grains. Here's what that sounds like. Density controls the rate at which new grains are generated, and grain shape controls the volume envelope of each grain. So if I just pull down the grain shape for a moment, I'll show you how density affects the sound. And adding in more grain shape will smooth out the grains. And the final set of controls that are unique to the granular engine are these tracking controls where we can select the sort of part of the sample that we're working with. And to really show this off, I'll actually select a sample that's got a bit more variation in it. So if I move the position dial, this will change where we actually start sampling the grains from. And if I set the speed control to 12 o'clock exactly, we're now not moving around and we're only taking grains from one specific part of the sample. This means we can really hear what a difference moving the position makes, but also the spray control, which we're now changing the width of that selection. So it'll probably just be best to demonstrate this visually. Here's what this sounds like. Now if I turn the spray down and move the speed up, we can see it going through. And I can move these loop markers to select just how much of the sample we're using for this. And if I want, I can stop it from looping by pressing this button here. You can hear at the end it just granulates the last sample that you end the loop on, which is quite handy. Okay, the next thing to show you is the reverse button, which reverses the individual grains. So this isn't the same as the speed control going backwards. This is actually changing the direction of the sample itself. This might be a bit more obvious if I use stutters as the sample. So let's play this as it is. 
Now, if I hit reverse on this, let's turn the speed up. Nice. Last thing I'm going to do before I wrap up is show you the remaining atmosphere layers that we haven't looked at. And to do this, I might as well use the solo violin textures. Here's what this sounds like as is. Let's solo out one of the atmosphere layers. Let's have a listen to some new ones. Nexus sounds kind of interesting. Very kind of granular, that. Mirage. Perigee. Oblique. Rapture. Enigma. Ooh. Astral. You can hear a bit more of the original sample in that, which I quite like. Pulse. Cool, cool, cool. Peak. And last but not least, Nebula. So this was Fracture Sounds Trails, the third instalment in their signature collection, and not only an incredible set of sounds, but an incredible set of tools to go with it. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough video, and if you have, please consider giving it a like and leaving any comments or questions down below. Subscribe to the Fracture Sounds channel so you don't miss any more incredible libraries in the future, and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye. <laughs>